Some surprising revelations about the life of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex inside their compound suggest that they live a very secluded and isolated existence. Many wealthy and famous Americans have chosen to withdraw from public life for various reasons, such as Howard Hughes, J.D. Salinger, and Greta Garbo. They became reclusive icons that fascinated the public for decades. Is Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, trying to follow their example and become a reluctant recluse? Hello and a very warm welcome to British Royal Daily Update's YouTube channel. It may seem unlikely, given that the 38-year-old has just spent a week joyfully traveling around Asia, visiting Tokyo and Singapore, with a smile that seemed permanent on his face. However, back in gloomy London, the Sun has been investigating the recent rumors about Harry and his wife Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex's marriage, which has become a mystery akin to Area 52, much talked about, much speculated, but with the truth still elusive. What interests us here is not what the paper has to say about their relationship, in short, they are fine, but about its portrayal of what is happening behind the doors of the couple's huge California estate. According to The Sun, the Sussexes' life is one of self-imposed isolation behind the heavily secured walls of their massive mansion with its 16 bathrooms. I will never get tired of that fact or the endless jokes one can make about thrones. Harry, it seems, has an obsession with security and privacy, and the couple's children Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet are rarely seen outside the family's £11 million Montecito mansion. Apart from where one might expect to see a four- and two-year-old outside the home, do toddlers in California attend the opening of a new Nobu? The son's description of the Sussex's life makes it sound less like Harry has found freedom rather than bought himself the world's most luxurious, base-decorated prison. Is this what the Duke sacrificed his family as TV victims for? To spend his days hiding behind high walls and worrying about the paparazzi outside their front gate? The Sun story claims that the Duchess wants to resume her public life, with Archie, 4, and Lilibet, 2, by her side. The couple have different views on parenting, and Harry has been deeply affected by his public upbringing. While Harry, 38, is very concerned about security and privacy, Meghan wants to raise them openly in California. A source told the paper, there is a difference in how he has grown up. He worries for his own children because of what he has experienced. Does this sound like a happy or easy or desirable situation? Exactly. The sad irony is that one could argue that the Duke and Duchess actually gave up on having some paparazzi-free zones, if you will, when they left the UK with their trunks full of dream journals and nightclub wristbands. If Harry is obsessed with privacy, one has to wonder about the logic of moving to the paparazzi capital of the world. Last year, in Meghan's first print interview in a long time, she spoke to the cut's Alison P. Davis. Davis writes that the Duchess had remarked upon how, if Archie were in school in the UK, she'd never be able to do school pickup and drop off without it being a royal photo call with a press pen of 40 people snapping pictures. Sorry, I have a problem with that. That doesn't make me obsessed with privacy. That makes me a strong and good parent protecting my child, Meghan told Davis. However, there has never been a press pen of 40 people snapping pictures at Prince George, Princess Charlotte or Prince Louis various schools over the seven years of the trio being educated at campuses in Norfolk, London and Windsor. The royal who has been papped near their child's preschool. Meghan in California with Archie in 2021. In the last few months, Meghan alone has been photographed enjoying a farmer's market, being followed by a huge bodyguard on multiple occasions, leaving an office with Harry, out to dinner with Harry twice, hiking with friends, and most recently wearing a strangely wintry coat in the middle of summer with a calming sticker on her wrist. The couple and daughter Princess Lilibet were also photographed enjoying last month's 4th of July parade. In none of these instances have the Sussexes called in their powerful, sharp-toothed legal team, which might suggest that they have no choice but to put up with this. For one of the Sussexes, the time of self-chosen seclusion seems to be over, as the Duchess has been increasing her social activities in the past few weeks. She reportedly went to see Barbie with Portia de Rossi and other friends, then visited the San Isidro Ranch Hotel in Santa Barbara where she, 
took pictures and made videos with a group of bridesmaids, and attended one of Taylor Swift's LA shows. The Instagram celebrity account Ducks Moy posted a photo of her having lunch looking so chic and wealthy that you almost need shades to look at it, and then on Wednesday this week there was a photo of her posing with renowned writer Cleo Wade and her hairstylist Cardi Lee. The Duchess semi-reclusive phase is clearly over, but what about Harry's? The couple shares an office on their property. When a French camera crew went to the external Archule offices in April, they found them completely empty. Meanwhile, Page Six reported that Meghan's super agents at WME drive two hours each way from LA to see her at home. If that's the case for the couple's other meetings, then how often does Harry actually interact with people who are not his wife or paid staff? In the past, there have been sightings of Harry in the wilds of Montecito and nearby areas, for example, he and Meghan had dinner with Princess Eugenie and her husband Jack Brooks Bank early last year, and he went to the Super Bowl with his cousin too. However, since then, the only times the 38-year-old has been photographed in public have been when he's walking his dog and on a few occasions out to dinner with his wife. All signs suggest that the Duchess of Sussex is preparing to make a big comeback to public life in the coming months, through whatever projects WME might have secured for her, a possible online venture, and a long-awaited return to Instagram. The at Meghan account is believed, but not confirmed, to be hers. Where will Harry be in all of this, happily by her side enjoying the reflected glamour and celebrating his wife's newfound fame? Or at home, slouched on the sofa in a hoodie stained with noodles, gloomily trying to solve the day's wordle, stuck in self-chosen seclusion? That handy source of the sons also said of the Duke and Duchess, they have a beautiful life. Harry loves being outdoors, he loves it there. Maybe Joni Mitchell was wrong all those years ago, paradise is not paved, but it does have a huge wall around it. The Suits actress was already friends with the Ally McBeal star, 50, who lives with Ellen in Montecito. Victoria Jackson, a cosmetics mogul and a friend of Ellen's, recently joined the social circle. She is married to Bill Guffey, whose agency promotes the beauty lines of Jennifer Lopez. Amanda Leone, who lives nearby, is said to be Meghan's most trusted hairdresser. She is also a friend of Ellen's. Power figures, Ari Emanuel's company owns the Ultimate Fighting Championship, a mixed martial arts organization. The 62-year-old businessman is the chief executive of Endeavor, a talent agency that signed Meghan earlier this year. His wife Sarah Stordinger, 34, is the founder of Stord, a popular accessory brand, and is also friends with the couple. Whitney Wolf Heard, 34, the co-founder of Tinder and the chief executive of Bumble, and her husband Michael Heard, an heir to a Texas oil fortune, went on a sushi date with Harry and Meghan in May. As well as being part of their inner circle, 16-time Grammy-winning songwriter David Foster and his fifth wife Catherine McPhee are also close to Harry and Meghan. Catherine, who was the runner-up on American Idol, said, Harry has a beautiful relationship with my husband, like a father and son. Meghan has known Catherine, 39, since they were children and that's how Harry became friends with David, 73. They are also reportedly, very good friends, with Oprah Winfrey, who they gave their first interview to after stepping down as royals. New showbiz, friends. Harry has a link with Saturday Night Fever star John Travolta as he danced with Princess Diana at the White House in 1985. The couple is said to have hit it off with the 69-year-old actor when they met him at the Beverly Hills Hotel in Los Angeles. They spent some time in the VIP polo lounge, but it's not clear if this will be a lasting friendship. One of their rare date nights this year was with their Something About Mary star Cameron Diaz, 50, and her rocker husband Benji Madden. They had dinner together in Montecito in May. Old friends, Lucy Fraser is a longtime friend who joined the Duchess at a Taylor Swift concert in Los Angeles last week. She and Meghan met in 2014, went to Costa Rica together and worked on the TIG. Lucy was in the Netflix documentary and at their wedding. And Harry has kept in touch with Argentinian polo player Nacho Figueres. They were together in Singapore earlier this month for a charity polo match and have been friends since 2007. Nacho, 46, is another friend of Ellen. 
Meghan became friends with model Kelly Zajfen through her first husband, Trevor Engelson. She and Harry are believed to eat with her and her lawyer husband Julian at the private San Vicente Bungalows Members Club, Hollywood. The Out Crowd Meghan's Out Crowd, Harry and Meghan were welcomed into David and Victoria Beckham's world shortly after they started dating. Please subscribe to British Royal Daily Updates YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell, this way you will be notified when we drop a video, stay safe.